You should watch this at night. What appeared to be some human hair was discovered, and underneath this were human remains. Hey guys, my name is Sahara. Welcome to That True Crime channel. Let's get into it. Tonight we're talking about the Gloucester House of Horrors, a case that happened in England mainly in the 70s, and it all starts with Rosemary. Rosemary Pauline West Letts was born on November 29th, 1953, in that part of England. When her mother was pregnant with her, she was prescribed ECT, and it is believed to have affected Rosemary in the sense that she would later be described as slow and mentally challenged. If you don't know what ECT is, I didn't. It is an acronym that stands for electroconvulsive therapy. It used to be called electroshock therapy. It is a medical treatment most commonly used with patients who suffer from severe depression or bipolar disorder if they haven't responded to traditional treatments. The way it works is they induce seizures electrically on the head of the patient. Some neighbors of the Letts family said that the children, Rosemary and her siblings, were brought up in a very strict manner. They would be beaten. They were not allowed to get their clothes dirty when they went out. They wouldn't even play outside. They would just walk around stiffly, too afraid to get their parents angry with them. They didn't leave the house much anyway. They would only play in their own garden, never outside with other kids. Rosemary's parents divorced when she was a teenager and for a while she lives with her mother. Later, when she's 16, she moves in with her father and he was a violent man physically and sexually abusing his own daughter over and over. He is known to always find a reason to beat his own children. One of them remembered if he felt like his kids went to bed too late, he would throw a bucket of cold water over them. Rosemary is known to be sexually precautious. She'd walk around naked in the house after taking a bath. She would go into her brother's bedroom, climb into bed with him and start to fondle him. I mean, if you grew up with a father raping you, your sexuality is bound to be messed up. She was around 16 when she met Fred West. At first, Rosemary's father doesn't approve of the relationship and he would often threaten Fred. So the couple ended up moving in together and she was caring for his two children from a previous relationship, which she resented. But we'll get into that later. In 1970, so she was 23 years old, she got pregnant with Fred's baby. And that's when they moved to 25 Midland Road in Gloucester. Rosemary would have eight children, five from Fred and three from clients. She actually was a part-time sex worker and oftentimes her husband would watch. He's not a perv, he's not a peeping Tom. He's probably just doing that to give her constructive criticism. Maybe he wants her to do well at work. You know? After all, Fred was the one who came up with the idea of prostitution. He would post naked pictures of Rosemary in the newspaper. He even converted one of the rooms in the house into what they would call Rose's room, aka her office, aka where she would receive her customers. On some walls of this room were peepholes so Fred could watch. And there was even a red light outside the door. If it was on, it meant for the kids, do not enter. You know, like the do not disturb sign in hotels? He thought of everything. Again, we have a case of very devoted husband. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video. Rosemary's most loyal customer is her own father, with the consent of Fred. I guess her father finally approved of the relationship. When he would visit for sex, he sometimes would also rape Fred's own daughter. I guess he did his best to get in his soon-to-be father-in-law's good graces. Or he's just someone with good manners, you know? He learned to share his wife, his daughter, you name it. Now let's talk about Fred for a minute. He was born on the 29th of September 1941 in a very poor family of farmers. He had five siblings and just like Rosemary's incestuous environment, Fred claimed his father had incestuous relations with his two sisters. I mean Fred's sisters, so his own daughters. And it was just an accepted part of the household. It was not sexual abuse the way he described it. He also declared his mother sexually abused him when he was 12. She invited him to her bed, she had sex with him, and she encouraged him to do the same with his sisters. Fred performed poorly in school even though he showed talent for arts and woodwork, and he ends up dropping out at age 15. Two years later, he's involved in a motorcycle accident and it left him in a coma for about eight days. He had a fractured skull, broken arm, and leg. His family claimed that after the accident, he was never the same again. He would have sudden fits of rage. When he was 20, he was arrested and convicted for molesting a 13-year-old girl. But somehow he didn't go to prison. Good job, Justice. His family disowned him after that. Which at first I thought it was odd, since his father was said to be the one who taught him to do whatever he wanted. He taught him to be brutal and careless. But then I found this phrase that he would often say to Fred, do whatever you want, just don't get caught. Which explains why they would disown him after he was convicted. Fred started to date Catherine Costello when he was 21 
one, known as Rina from when she was a prostitute. After two years of being in a relationship and while she's pregnant with another man's child, they get married. Soon after that, she gives birth to Charmaine, but the couple would deny that she was Rina's biological daughter, they would say she was adopted from Pakistan. A year later, Rina is pregnant with Fred's child and they name her Anne-Marie. For a short while, Fred works as an ice cream truck driver and he ends up running over a four-year-old child and killing him. And because he feared for his life, they all moved to Bishop's Cleeve in Gloucestershire. And they had two friends come along, Isa, who was friends with the couple and she would sometimes babysit the children, and Anne, who was Rina's friend. But when Rina got tired of her husband's crazy sex demands. He was into bondage, sex toys, swinging, sadism, and I'm gonna stop the list here because my family is watching this video. Rena decided to move to Scotland with Isa, leaving her daughters behind. Han, who was Rena's friend, decided to stay with Fred and the girls because she was madly in love with him. She would end up being pregnant with Fred's baby. I feel like I should specify when these women get pregnant with Fred's baby or a customer's baby. I got confused myself writing the story. As I was saying, Anne is eight months pregnant. This is 1967 and all of a sudden she disappears. No one reports her missing. A year later Fred meets Rosemary. He was 29 years old, she was 15. She had a reputation of having a thing for older men so that definitely played a part in their encounter. They move in together a year later and settle in 25 Midland Road in Gloucester. Fred then went to prison for theft for about six months in 1971. Yeah he goes to prison for theft but molesting a 13 year old? We'll just give you a warning. Good job justice. In 1972 he and Rosemary got married and they would have two daughters, Heather Ann and May. After the birth of their second child, May, was when Fred encouraged his wife to become a sex worker. They move into a bigger house at 25 Cromwell Street, still in Gloucester, and this is where shit will hit the fan. Now, right before the family moved to 25 Cromwell, here's what happened. Remember when Fred was in prison? It was Rosemary who was taking care of his daughters, Charmaine and Anne-Marie. When he got back from prison, supposedly she told him that Rena, their mother, came to pick up only Charmaine and take her to Scotland with her. Remember Charmaine is not the biological daughter of Fred, only Anne-Marie is. Both daughters were said to be frequently beaten by Rosemary, but Charmaine was the one who really got on her nerves because no matter how hard she would hit her, she would never cry. Now, Rena actually did show up to pick up her daughters, but she disappeared. What happened to her? Why would she only take Charmaine and not Anne-Marie as well? And where is Charmaine? We'll get to that. The West couple were driving home one day, it's October 1972, and they find a hitchhiker. They offer her a ride, they start talking to her, they really like her. So they offer her a job as a nanny. She gladly accepted, she got along with Rose immediately, so she felt safe. You can see where this is going, right? Upon arriving at the house and spending some time with the West family, Caroline, the nanny, she started to notice Fred being a bit odd. He would brag a lot and say very unsettling things like, you know, if you get pregnant, I can help you get an abortion. I've done this before. But the most upsetting thing was when she heard him say in front of Anne-Marie that she wasn't a virgin anymore. Caroline immediately realizes that this young girl is probably being sexually abused. Eventually, Caroline decided to go back home hitchhiking. But the couple went looking for her and found her on the road. They pick her up and they're very apologetic. They took her back but when they arrived home, they gagged her, tied her up and sexually assaulted her. What really shocked Caroline the most was Rosemary was taking part in it after being so friendly with her. And she would take part in everything that was being done to Caroline. Raping her, beating her, holding her down while Fred is tying her up. The couple told her that they would kill her and bury her under the pavement. And while they're threatening her, they're suffocating her with the pillow. And at that point, I kind of wished I was dead already. I, I wished the pillow had stayed because, sorry, that, that really gets to me. It's the fact that he could, he could so easily have just done that. Caroline managed to escape and immediately goes to police. They take her statement, but they make her feel like it was her fault. That's why she didn't feel safe enough to tell them about the rape, but she told them about everything else. And the couple was apprehended by authorities, but they were only fined 50 pounds. It's the equivalent today of 250 pounds or 200 and 80 euros or 330 US dollars. Good job, Justice. Now, this is when the walls start to close in on the West family. In 1992, Fred filmed himself raping one of his daughters, but this time she would tell someone at school. The mother of that kid who heard that confession went straight to the police. A case was opened with social services. After interviews with the youngsters who were aged between 15 and 11, 
Fred and Rose West were both charged with abusing their own children. And the children were placed in foster care. However, they changed their minds and they refused to testify, probably too scared, and unfortunately the case ends up being dropped. But one of them did say something very disturbing to one of the social workers who was involved in the case. That child claimed that when their parents would tell them off, they would say, if you don't behave, you'll end up under the patio like Heather. Heather is the oldest child of Fred and Rosemary. And she actually had gone missing, but no one reported it. If people would ask about her, the West family would simply reply that she had moved out to another city for work. After the sexual abuse case was dropped, the police started to look into Heather's disappearance. And they thought that maybe she had left the house for a job somewhere else in England. But that comment about her being under the patio really troubled police. After checking tax records that showed she wasn't employed anywhere and she hadn't visited a doctor in years, they got a warrant to search the premises of 25 Cromwell Street. And while they were digging in the garden and in the patio, one of the journalists who was there asked Fred, Where's Heather? To which he replied, I haven't killed my daughter. That's not what he was asking you. That, 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 that wasn't the question. The body of a woman was found and a third leg as well. So either she has three legs, it's possible, or it belongs to another body. Fred was interrogated and he admitted to killing four women. Rena, his first wife, and her daughter Charmaine, Alison Chambers, and Shirley Robinson, eight months pregnant. Shirley had moved in with the West family, kind of like Caroline, the nanny. Her and Fred had started an affair and she became pregnant. It's believed that he killed her because she got pregnant. While he was in custody, Fred confessed, then recanted, then confessed again. Especially about Heather. I killed her and cut her body into three pieces. The sound was horrible noise like scrunching. Oh no, she's live and well. You know what I did? I choked her, but it was an accident. Then I made sure she was dead before dismembering her. If somebody sat there looking at you, you're not gonna use a knife on that person, are you? He said. It's believed that at first he wanted to take all the blame in order to not have Rosemary go to prison. So sweet. But at some point, they have a joint hearing. Fred tries to console Rosemary he reaches for her shoulder, but she moves away and she says, conveniently in front of police officers, you make me sick. And that's when the great partnership in crime was over. Every man for himself. Every cycle for himself. At 25 Cromwell Street, police continues to excavate and they find body after body after body, not just in the garden, but also in the bathroom and in the cellar. Naked, bound, dismembered, and most of them decapitated. One of the bodies even had a plastic bag over the head with two small holes coming out of the nose and plastic tubes were coming out of the holes to let that person breathe, I suppose. They also found small bones, either toes or fingers or kneecaps, removed from the bodies, meaning they had been tortured. It hadn't been done post-mortem. And the autopsy confirmed that. Final count of the dead bodies on the property is nine. All women, one pregnant. Charmaine's remains were found at the old couple's house. 25 Midland Road. Fred had admitted to killing her, even telling them where to find the body, but, but police knew that Rosemary hated Charmaine. They put two and two together and they realized that she probably has died while Fred was in prison in 1971, which was confirmed by the autopsy. At the time, Rosemary was only 16. Police believed that she actually told Fred and upon coming out of prison, Fred helped her dispose of the body. And then he killed Rena under the pretense of having her come down to visit her daughters, apparently he felt the need to get rid of the one person who would have looked for her. Fred just keeps confessing to police, but he contradicts himself. I killed four women, I killed 20 women, and they search where he claimed that some of them were buried. In a field outside Gloucester, the body of Rena was found, along with the remains of another woman who was six months pregnant. But Fred would always deny killing her. I killed Rena, but not her. Okay, so someone else killed that woman who is buried right next to Rena at the exact same spot. Okay, that totally makes sense. That other body was actually Anne's. Remember Rena's friend who moved in with them temporarily and then she became infatuated with Fred and got pregnant? He got police a lot of work to do since he got confused with the number of victims, their location, the time frame. Some of them he even cannot identify. He doesn't know their names. He even referred to one of them as Scar Hen because she had a scar on her hand. Some of the victims were identified with the autopsy, but in spite of extensive work that had been done to match up missing persons reports with the remains, other victims' identities would never be confirmed. Fred was charged with the murder of 12 women, the nine bodies that were found at 25 Cromwell, Charmaine's body found at 25 Midland, and Rena and Anne found in the field. And because no other bodies were found, he would never be charged for the other murders he confessed to. Rosemary kept saying that 
Her living at 25 Cromwell Street didn't mean she had anything to do with whatever happened there. Doesn't make her guilty for any of the murders. It really can't be that logic. During the trial, many people testified, accounting for the horror that went on for years at the West's houses. Anne-Marie, remember the daughter of Fred and Rena, told the court about the sexual abuse her and her sibling went through. She even got pregnant from her own father and she had a miscarriage. She reveals the actual reason Heather was killed is because she would resist her father raping her and beating her. I feel bad for all the victims, but I gotta tell you, Heather, I really identified with her. Now, that's the kind of person I am. I'd fight tooth and nail, even if it means being killed. Maybe it's easier to say that when you're not in the situation, obviously. It just made me so sad that she lost her life over trying to be so strong and brave. The nanny Caroline testified as well. And this time she revealed that she was raped. And her testimony was crucial in the sense that it confirmed how the couple would operate to get these women to come to their house. They'd pick up hitchhikers on the road mostly. And because Caroline had gone to police after what happened to her, investigators were convinced that right there and then, the couple decided that from that point on to never again let their victims escape. I, all I had in my mind was, I'm going to face her this time. Because I felt so guilty about not getting them a prison sentence the first time round. If I'd got them a prison sentence, probably none of these girls would have died. Other women also testified to Rosemary's sadistic sexual assaults on young women, even though she tried to play victim to her husband's devious ways. She never convinced anybody. When she took the stand, the prosecution was smart enough to make her angry. She showed the jury that she was quick to anger, and it was completely relevant with everything that was said about her, that she was abusive with her children and potentially with the victims. She was also seen as the dominant partner. Sadly, Fred eluded justice by taking his own life when he was in jail awaiting trial. You can't escape the justice of men, but you'll never escape the justice of God. Often I read or it's been said that he hanged himself. He didn't hang himself at all. He asphyxiated himself, having over a period of time uh, made a rope out of a blanket. He couldn't really use anything other than the handles of the, the door and uh, a uh, catchment on, the, on a window to bind this piece of rope round. But what he successfully did was bound it round his neck uh, and sank to his knee. Rosemary was found guilty of 10 of the murders and she was sentenced to life in prison. She will never be allowed out. Well, I certainly hope so. Fred's brother hanged himself. He couldn't believe what his brother had done. He was especially horrified by the fact that he raped Anne-Marie. And poor Anne-Marie, she tried to kill herself many times during the trial with a sleeping pill overdose. Later, she tried to jump off a bridge, but she was rescued. One of her brothers also tried to kill himself, again by hanging himself. But the rope he was using just broke. Number 20 25 Cromwell Street was completely demolished. In its place, a simple walkway with no memorial or marker to remind people of the awful crimes that happened there. So that concludes the horrifying story of the West couple. One last thing before I go, rent a item review. Winter is coming. Glitter snow globe. I'm gonna put a link in the description box. It's not gonna be the exact same article. It's gonna be something very, very similar to it. Okay guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to comment, like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.